Alright, we're back and today we're doing or we're starting electric circuits and um, I'd like to start this unit with a drawing of an electric circuit. So here I'm going to draw a battery. Now this looks kind of like a car battery and I have my positive is negative and my positive terminals on my battery and I'm going to connect it to a wire and then the wire is going to be connected to a socket and that socket is going to have uh, a light bulb in it and that light bulb has a filament and when the current flows like this it will produce light that's a light bulb now we need to define a few things. First of all, the battery is our power source. And the light bulb, that is our load. And it's also called a resistance. And I here is defined as our current that flows through the circuit. And in order for this current to flow and the light bulb to be on, we have to have a closed circuit. That's a closed loop. So let's let's write that down. Uh, current will only flow let me move that over a bit will only flow in a closed in a closed loop circuit In other words, this right here is a closed loop and the battery is connected to it. Now, usually I don't denote this in this picture format. I will denote it in an electric diagram format. And the diagram format here would be, for the picture above, would be like this. So this is our resistance, R, and this is our power source, or this is our battery. And the battery terminals are negative and positive. A really easy way, so this is the electrical circuit representation of the diagram above. But an easy way to memorize this is for a battery at least how do you memorize which side of a battery is negative and positive the answer is very easy and this is the way that I memorize it so if you look at the two sides of the battery which side takes more ink or more length to draw well it's the right hand side now if you think about drawing a minus and a plus symbol the minus symbol takes up less ink or less lines to draw and the plus side takes more. So the plus side always goes to the longer side. And that's, that's, that's the symbol for a battery there. Um, now we should also denote the quantity or how we measure 
a battery and we measure it with uh, its voltage and the variable we use is V and the unit is also a V okay now for current we represent that just by an arrow and the current is measured in amperes and the variable is an A okay and finally the last one is resistance and resistance is denoted by this jagged line or uh, squiggly line, whichever way you want to call it. And um, it's measured in ohms. And the unit is the ohm, but it's represented by the Greek letter omega. And these guys are all related. So the voltage, the current, and the resistance are all related through Ohm's law. And Ohm's law states, oops, that's, that's Ohm's lamb. Ohm's law is the equation V equals I R, ver. Okay? And so now we can use that equation in our circuit diagram. Before we use Ohm's law, I want to define something here. Let's kind of move this over a little bit. So according to this diagram here, the battery's positive side is the long side of the battery. And I know therefore that the current's going to be going in this direction. Now that current, I, is called conventional current. And conventional current actually consists of positive charge. But in real life, we know that current actually consists of negative charge. So if I was to draw the battery with the negative and the positive side, and connect it up to my resistance, I know that this would be the direction of my actual current. Actual real current. But we never write it in this direction. We never have current leaving the negative terminal and going into the positive terminal. This is only, I'm only showing this to you to understand real current direction because real current consists of electrons, free electrons in the conductor. Now this, this wire here, whether it's this one here or whether it's this one here, th these, are, these are conducting wires. And a conductor is usually made of either copper or uh, aluminum, uh, something like that. Copper is usually the best one to use. It is more expensive than aluminum, though. But conductors have free electrons. And so 
these electrons are what actually move. Uh, or it's a little bit more complicated than that, but for this level, it's okay if we if we think of it that way. But what I really want to stress here is that this is not what we're going to study. We're going to study and learn about the direction of current as in conventional current. That is the direction that we're going to learn and stick with. That's how it's taught in every textbook and that's how we're going to follow it as well. Now that means that positive charge will flow away from the positive terminal and into the negative terminal. So this is correct. Okay? So we're not going to we're not going to learn actual current direction. We're always going to be dealing with conventional current. So uh, if I draw this again and let's let's do a little example of Ohm's law here. So let's say here is my resistance. Now again, this could be any load. It could be a light bulb. It could be a radio. Uh, doesn't matter. Something that consumes electricity. And then we have our battery. And remember the long side is our positive side. Now our positive side we're going to say this is the high side or the high potential. And the negative side will be described as our low potential. And potential uh, is another way of saying voltage. That means the current is going to be traveling in this direction, away from the positive. It's going to go through the resistor, and it'll do. Some, we'll be able to do some useful work with it through the resistor, like create light. And then it'll come back to the negative side of the battery, where the battery will pump it through again. Um, however. Notice that this wire is conducting. In a conducting wire, the voltage is always the same. So that means whatever voltage I have at this point, at the terminal of the battery, will be the same voltage here at the terminal of the load. Why? Because if I follow a path along here, going from this point along here, towards this point, it's all just connected by a wire. There's nothing in the way. So that means this point will be at the same potential as that one. That means this is the high potential. So we'll say we'll represent this with a plus. And I can do the same thing on the other side. This point is connected direct. Oops, I kind of went off the line there. This point is connected directly to this point. So that means this side, since this is low, net will represent that with a negative. This is at the same potential as the negative side of the battery. So if you'll notice, if the current is traveling in this direction across the resistance, across the resistor, we're going from high potential on this side to low potential on this side. But the battery is the act exact opposite. The battery here, we're going from low, going in this direction, right, which is the direction of the current, and then we're, gonna, we're going to high on the other side of the battery. Okay? Now, what you need to know is that this is actually kind of I like to, when I teach um, electric circuits, Ohm's law is kind of also connected to Kirchhoff's laws. 
But essentially, the voltage change in a loop is always zero. So if you go in a loop, traveling in a loop, so we'll say voltage change in a loop is always zero. Now, if you think about that, what it means is that if we start, let's say, at this point right here, and we go in a loop all the way around, it means that this point will be at the same electric potential or same voltage. So that means whatever we gain, we must also lose because the change must be zero. So let's say, for example, that this battery, this let's say this battery is a 12 volt battery. And let's also say that this uh, resistor, let's say, is a four ohm resistor. Okay, so now we know that our resistance is 4 ohms and we know that our battery is 12 volts. Notice the units I'm using here is consistent uh, with what I was using before to describe it, right? So voltage is V, current is A, and resistance is in ohms. There they are. Now, what can we calculate? Well, if we use Ohm's law, we can calculate the current in the circuit. If I take this equation, Ohm's law, and I rearrange it to solve for I, I can say I equals V divided by R. And I know that the voltage is 12 volts, and the resistance is 4 ohms. That gives me a current of 3 amps. So now I know that my current is 3 amps. 3 amps of, cur uh, of current is flowing and so if I kind of, let me just draw it one more time and I'll kind of explain what's going on here. Here's my resistance, here's my battery, this is the long, that's the long side, and there we go, and that's connected to there. So here I have 12 volts, here's my negative, here's my positive. So I could say that at this point I am at 0 volts, at this point I'm at positive 12 volts, and right here, on this side of the resistor, I'm at positive 12 volts. And at this side, on the other side of the, res of the resistor, I'm at 0 volts. You see? So that means that across the battery, I have a gain, oops, a gain of 12 volts. And on the resistor, side, I have a loss of 12 volts because the current is traveling in this direction. Okay? So you can see that the voltage is, we're losing electric potential across the resistor and we're gaining electric potential across the battery. Okay, let's try and make this problem a little tiny bit more complicated. Instead of having one resistor, let's have two of them. And now we'll have the same battery. Now remember before uh, I had a 4 ohm, so we'll keep that 4 ohm resistor here. 
And we'll also put a 2 ohm resistor there. And we'll keep the battery at 12 volts, negative, positive. What we need to do in this case, again, is I'd like to figure out what is the current. And of course, I also know that the current is traveling in this direction. But I can say the current is equal to, so now this is the total current here. Okay, so I'll put a T here. It was the same in the other one too. But if you, if you think of the current as like, this is one way to look at it, but if you think of it as flowing water, then if you think of this wire as like a garden hose, then whatever current goes through this first resistor or first load, and, and again, this could be a light bulb, it could be a radio, it could be a household appliance like a coffee grinder or a blender, you know, variety of things, many different devices consume electricity. Um, but all of that, whatever passes through here, must also pass through this second resistor. That, by the way, has a lower resistance than the first one. And again, now what we need to to write down here is this equation, Ohm's law, V over R. And I'm gonna say total here, and I'm gonna say total here. Now the reason I'm doing that with the T subscripts is to say that, okay, what is the total voltage gain in this circuit? And I could say, well, clearly it's the 12 volts. There is no other power source here. It's the only battery in the circuit. So now I know that the voltage is 12 volts. That's the, that's the total voltage of the circuit. I don't know what the current is yet, but also I want to get the total resistance. Now in order to calculate that, I can look at these two resistors and note that they are in series. Now this is a new word that you may not have heard yet. resistance in series and this word is important this word means that the resistances the, or the resistors are connected back to back so if this was R1 and this is R2 and this is R3 then the total resistance for all of them can simply be arithmetically summed. R1 plus R2 plus R3. In other words, in our example above, we have a 4 and a 2. Well, 4 plus 2 equals 6. So now we know that the total resistance is 6. Now we can apply it to this equation of Ohm's law and we can say I equals 12 volts divided by 6 ohms, which gives us a current of 2 amps. Notice my units and how I'm writing it out. So now I know that this, I have 2 amps of current flowing. Now that I know the current that is flowing, I can now calculate the voltage drop across each and every resistor. So again, I will apply Ohm's law to each resistor. Now I know that this is the high side and this is the low side for this resistor and this is the high side and this is the low side of this resistor. It's essentially it's opposite of the battery. But let's now use Ohm's law V equals IR for this specific resistor. Now in this case I know that the current flowing through this guy is the total 2 amps. So I can say 2 amps multiplied by its resistance of 
4 ohms. And that's going to give me an answer of 2 times 4 is 8 volts. That means I know that across, and I let me kind of uh, change colors here. Okay, so changing colors, I know now that across this guy here, I have 8 volts. Okay, so there's a drop of 8 volts going from here to here. Now let's do the same calculation for the other guy. Now, by the way, I don't have to do this. Okay, I can do this in two different ways. Think about this for a second. If I start out with 12 volts here and I lose 8 of that 12, then what's left? I kind of I know at this point that the drop, just by using simple ar arithmetic, I know that this has to be 4. Why? Because 8 plus 4 equals 12. Let's see if it works out with the Ver equation for this one. If I say V equals IR, what's my current? Well, there it is. It's a 2 amps multiplied by my resistance, which is right here, 2 ohms. And you can see 2 times 2 is 4. So it, it does confirm that, aha, my voltage across my 2 ohm resistor is 4 volts. And so if my total resistance across my battery is 12, 8 of the 12 gets dropped across the 4 ohm, and the remaining 4 volts gets dropped across the 2 ohm resistor for a total drop of 12 volts matching the gain of the battery, which makes sense. Because remember, the change in voltage in a, in a closed loop has to be zero. That means we have plus 12 and minus 12 equals zero. So for practice, let's do another question that's gonna be identical to the one above. All I'm gonna do is change the numbers. Let's see if you can get it. Let's see if you can figure it out. So I'm going to have, oops, wrong color. I'm going to have, uh, again, two resistors. And this time, I'm going to change the battery to be 24 volts. And I'm going to make this one a 5 ohm resistor and I'm gonna make this one a 3 ohm resistor. Can you find the total total current and find the voltage drop across each resistor? Pause the video now and try it. Okay, so to solve this problem, what we'll do first is we'll calculate the total current by saying it's the total voltage divided by the total resistance. And in this case, it's 24, oops, not 12, it's 24 volts divided by, now the total resistance in this case is 3 plus 5, which is 8 ohms. And therefore, 24 divided by 8 is going to give us 3 amps. That means we have a current of 3 amps flowing through the circuit. Now, if 3 amps is flowing through here, that means 3 amps is flowing through both the 5 and the 3. And that means that the voltage drop across this guy is V equals IR, and the voltage drop across this guy is V equals IR, where the I is the same for both. So it's 3 times 3, which is 9, 
volt drop here, and in this case, it's three times five, which is 15 volt drop here. That means there's 15 volts drop across this guy, and there's nine volt drop across this guy. Notice that 15 plus nine is going to give me 24, which is correct. And that's the solution for that problem. So we'll stop there and uh, we'll continue next time.